Well, welcome to this episode of Historical Markers, y'all. We are in Ballard County, Kentucky, and there's a lot, eh, a pretty good number here to look at, and I'm excited to find out what we uh, discover here in Ballard County, so stay tuned and join us for this episode of Historical Markers. All right, we're outside the Ballard County Courthouse here at Wycliffe, Kentucky. The county named in 1842 for Captain Bland Ballard, 1759 to 1853, born in Virginia, came to Kentucky in 1779. He devoted his life to protecting the frontiers. He was a scout for George Rogers Clark's Ohio Expedition in 1780 to 82, Wabash Campaign in 1786, in the Battles of Fallen Timbers, 1793, Tippecanoe, 1811, River Raisin in 1813 in Kentucky legislation, legislature for five terms. Um, the legislature directed his burial in the Frankfort Cemetery County from McCracken, Hickman. Right, this marker is on the grounds of the Ballard County Courthouse in Wycliffe, Kentucky. And it says uh, the United States Army. Private First Class Robert Monroe Hammonds was born on January 9, 1926, the second of six children of Rufus D. and Jetty T. Hammonds. A native of Wycliffe, Kentucky, he attended Wycliffe High School and was a member of the First Baptist Church. As the oldest son of a farmer, he had the opportunity to defer military service, but chose not to. As a young man, he stood six feet one inches tall and weighed 125 pounds during World War II. He was an infantry soldier who served as a wireman assigned to G Company, 2nd Battalion, 397th Infantry Regiment, 100th Infantry Division. He fought with the Century Division as it endured six straight months of combat beginning in the lower Vosages Mountain. Vosages Mountains of France. Private First Class Hammonds was killed April 11, 1945, near Heilbronn, Germany. He was posthumously awarded the Purple Heart for sacrificing his life in defense of his country and the Silver Star for gallantry in action. The citation reads, after seven days and nights of hazardous and almost unremitting efforts to maintain wire communications during bitter house-to-house -house fighting, for the city of Halbron, Private Hammonds courageously volunteered to complete installation of a wire line within full view of the enemy. Hey, this marker is outside the Ballard County Courthouse in Wycliffe, Kentucky. It's in honor of all those who served their country during the Vietnam War, whose pride in their country and courage to stand up for American ideals deserve the respect and admiration of every American. We're here at the Wycliffe Mound State Historic Site. Nearly 1,000 years ago, this village was home for Native Americans of the prehistoric Mississippian culture. Peaceful farmers, these mound-building Indians, lived throughout the Ohio and Mississippi River Valleys. Exhibits at the Wycliffe Mounds Museum interpret the culture of the Mississippian people and the scientific discipline of archaeology. Research continues to provide important information about this archaeological site and its history. Operated by the Kentucky Department of Parks, Wycliffe Mounds has been designated as a Kentucky Archaeological Landmark and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. King Mounds, Ancient Buried City, site of an ancient religious and commercial center of the Mound Builder, approximately 1,000 years old, situated on the only high ground at the confluence of the Mississippi and Ohio Rivers. Tombs, temples, altars, jewels, dwellings, tools, etc. were uncovered. Excavation started October 2, 1932 for education and posterity. All right, this is a, a bird's eye view of the Wycliffe Mounds. Although Wycliffe Mounds is smaller than many other Mississippian sites, most of these Indian villages were laid out in a similar pattern. pattern. Usually located near a river or creek, these villages might include any number of platform mounds grouped around an open plaza, which was used for public gatherings. So, Right now, we are here 
There's the plaza, a platform mound, the cemetery mound, and then these were living areas. The history of a mound. In 1984, Wycliffe Mounds conducted an excavation into the side of this mound. The goal of this excavation was to collect information on the structure of the mound. Radiocarbon dating revealed two major mound building phases and several periods of smaller mound growth. The ceremonial mound, or Mound A. This is the largest mound on the site. It was named Mound A because it was the first mound excavated by Fang King in 1932 and was built by the Mississippi native people beginning in the 1100s AD to elevate the main ceremonial building. Excavations in the 1930s removed the center of this mound, much like the Chief's Mound, or Mound B. In the 1980s, the exposed excavation inside the ceremonial mound had to be filled in to stabilize the mound. The mound was built in at least six stages up until the mid-1300s when the village was abandoned. Based on evidence from excavations in 1932 and 1984 to 1985, Wycliffe Mounds archaeologists do not believe that people ever lived on this mound. The mound and the building on top of it probably served as a special and sacred ceremonial area and the center of economic, political, and religious activity. This marker is for the Chief's Mound, Mound B. Two platform mounds at Wycliffe Mounds, Mounds A and B, were built in successive stages over a period of about 200 years. A cross section of either mound would reveal a structure much like that of a layer cake. Mound B, the chief's mound, is the smaller of the two. The top of the mound is flat, and there were four sides to this mound. This mound was excavated in 1932, revealing floor features that showed evidence of the first house built on this mound in the early 1100s AD. Excavations in the mound have shown that a family lived on top of this mound. This appears to be the only residential mound on the site, and probably was the home of a chief's family. The excavations through the center of Mound B exposed a post hole pattern of the original building on this spot, indicative of an elite family, possibly the first chief's house. So this is the um, a picture of the excavated site in the 30s with the post hole features you can see around the edges there. Burial Mound, Mound C. Native American Indians of the Mississippian culture were buried in the cemetery mound sometime in the A.D. 1200s. First excavated in 1932 by er owner Colonel Fane King, the mound was referred to as Mound C. A building was constructed over the exposed burials and placed on display for many decades. In 1991, the remains were taken from public view out of respect to the Native American Indians and to be in compliance with federal laws that protect Indian burial burial mounds. Plastic replicas of the burials were then put on exhibit in the cemetery building. In 2011, after many years of consultations with Native American tribes and research collaborations with archaeologists, Kentucky State Parks reburied the remains in this mound in partnership with Murray State University archaeologist Dr. Kit Wessler and with the Chickasaw Nation overseeing the process. The building was dismantled and the mound was restored. And there's another sign here. I'm not going to uh, read all of this one, but it gives more details about Mound, the burial mound, Mound C, um, and some of the um, research that has been done. And um, because of the um, federal law known as the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, um, that protected Native American burial places. This mound, um, all remains that were on exhibit were taken off exhibit and then eventually they um, reburied everybody here in um, conjunction with the um, Native American tribes and archaeologists and uh, other people. Um, the mound has been restored to what it looked like when the Mississippian people first built it. The length, uh, how tall were the people that were buried here? The lengths of long bones um, that are related to a person's height, measuring uh, the average man was five foot six inches and the average woman was about five foot three, which is my height. Um, and that was very similar. 
um, they had a, a um, lifespan, three out of 10 children died at birth. Uh, those who survived had, for women, about 35 years and men could um, live about 42 years. And there were two burial types here. Um, extended position with their heads to the west and their legs to the east, but some bones were buried in bundles, possibly after being on a scaffold or in a charnel house. And there's a drawing of what it may have looked like. So that's the cemetery, the burial mound. This one is the Prince of the French Explorers. Commissioned by Louis the Fourteenth of France, the Sieur Robert de La Salle, sweeping down the Mississippi with his flotilla of canoes, stopped in 1682 at this place in his quest for the mouth of the Mississippi and an outlet for the French fur trade. This river, called Ohio by the Iroquois and Cabache or Wabash by the Algonquins, was proclaimed by La Salle on April 9, 1682 to be the northern watershed of the new province of Louisiana of the French colonial empire. French explorers at the confluence of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. Accompanied by Pierre Jacques Marquette, the Sieur Louis Joliet, commissioned by the French government at Quebec to explore the Mississippi River, stopped on this bank in 1673. According to the Jesuit relations by the Vinot, they were feasted by the Indians on buffalo meat, bear's grease, and white plums. Okay, this marker um, talks all about Fort Jefferson. There's a lot here. Um, you can pause and read. I'm just going to hit some highlights. Um, Fort Jefferson, also known as Camp Crittenden, was the second of two Union Army posts established in Ballard County in September 1861, following the Federate occupation of Columbus. Fort Jefferson was first established during the American Revolution by George Rogers Clark in 1780 and occupied until 1781. And the Civil, era, Civil War era fort was located on the same site, uh, just above the mouth of Mayfield Creek. It talks about the different um, troops that were at, at both sites and the raids and some things that was going on here. Um, again, you can pause and and read um this is uh fort holt was named for this guy joseph holt and then it goes up to say most of the troops from forts holt and jefferson accompanied general grant to forts henry and donaldson as the western theater moved east and south and on january 10 1862 federal troops were sent to fort jefferson as a diversion to distract confederates at fort henry and donaldson and uh, by 1862 both of these forts were deserted um and so here's a an engraving of fort holt uh which was on the kentucky side of the ohio river opposite cairo and then here's a photo of the USS Contestoga, which defeated the CSS Yankee in a skirmish that occurred near Fort Jefferson on the Mississippi River. All right, we are here outside of Wycliffe, Kentucky, on the river. And this is the Fort Jefferson Memorial Cross. And there is a lot going on here. We're looking for the marker. It looks like they're still erecting like this wall here with the names. Um, so it's still ongoing, the building here. But the base has all of these memorial uh, blocks on it. And over here is a wall with the names of others. The 
the marker that we're looking for is over there, so I'm going to walk over to that. I just kind of wanted to continue walking around the base of this just to show you all of the names, but we're looking for this marker right over here. This is the Fort Jefferson Memorial Cross at the Confluence. The story of the cross at Wycliffe began in 1937 when a few members of a community choir spearheaded by Mrs. Noah Gividen erected a small wooden cross on a hill at the ancient buried city now known as Wycliffe Mounds Research Center in Wycliffe, Kentucky. And then in 1951, Mr. and Mrs. Noah Gavadin furnished the materials to construct a 35-foot pole with cross arms to replace the smaller cross. Bill Howell wired it with 325 bulbs, and the bulbs were lit during Easter and Christmas every year. And it went on. If you, you can pause and read. I'm not going to read it all the way, but... Um, that site was sold to Murray State University. They had to find something, and they decided that the site, uh, the highest point along the river was Fort Jefferson Hill. It, the property came up from auction, and it was purchased on July 26, 1989. A name, the name um, was suggested from area residents. Uh, several churches, it looks like 51 churches in Ballard County, were invited to serve on the committee. And it talks about all the money that was raised uh, to build this, the bricks that can be purchased in honor or memory of loved ones, family, friends, and special people. And the groundbreaking ceremony was held on May 22nd, 1994. Uh, there's two phases, the base and the cross. There are pictures of the construction phases of this memorial. There it is. Alright, this marker is uh, for Lewis and Clark at Old Fort Jefferson. Long before Lewis and Clark stopped near Wycliffe in western Kentucky on their outbound trip to the west, Fort Jefferson had been built in 1780 to 81 by George Rogers Clark during the Revolutionary War. Revolutionary War as an outpost against British-led Indian attacks. It was also constructed to project to project the claim of the infant United States to a western boundary on the Mississippi River. Decommissioned within a year, records have been located detailing the day-to-day -day activities of those who lived in the fort or nearby. The journal kept by Lewis indicates that the Corps of Discovery spent the night of November 14, 1803, at the junction of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers near present-day Cairo, Illinois, where they remained until November 20th. During the days, the two captains tried to determine the best location for establishing a military fort. They also each spent time taking astronomical readings to determine latitude and longitude, and they visited the site where Old Fort Jefferson had stood. This is the next marker. It is the Fort Jefferson site, built in 1780 by George Rogers Clark as part of impressive plan of settlement conceived by Governor Patrick Henry of Virginia, later pursued by and named for Governor Thomas Jefferson. The fort was to protect U.S. claim to its western border and to be a key trading post. It was abandoned in 1781. Oh, and resettled after Jackson purchase important Union posts in the Civil War. Over the other side, Indian Massacre. In 1781, the Chickasaws, led by a Scotchman, Colbert, Colbert, aroused by use of their land without consent, besieged the fort for five days. Many settlers killed. Those left became desperate for provisions already low because of the difficulty in reaching the fort. General Clark arrived with reinforcements and supplies. The Indians withdrew. The fort was abandoned thereafter. Lewis and Clark in Kentucky, Fort Jefferson. Lewis and Clark and a party of eight men visited the site of Fort Jefferson on November 18, 1803, while on their epic 1803-1806 journey to the Pacific. Fort 
established in 1780 by Clark's brother, George Rogers Clark, but was abandoned one year later, Fort Jefferson. William Clark drew a map of the area in 1795 that showed the fort site. He also included in it an 1802 report that re recommended a military post at the confluence of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. This one says Union Supply Base, one of the first Kentucky positions, Fort Jefferson, occupied by Union troops after Confederate seizure of Columbus, September 1861. From this base, General U.S. Grant directed demonstration against Columbus, January 1862. Troops from here joined in capturing Fort Henry, February 1862. One of four river ports in area used as Union supply bases for the operation in the Western Theater. Well, did you enjoy this episode of Historical Markers? I did. I learned a whole lot. I hope that you are... Um, getting all of this information and uh, maybe just using that to spur interest into doing more research into the, the history of these counties. So um, thank you for joining us for Ballard County, Kentucky and like and subscribe if you've not done that and keep joining us for these. Um, you know, the wind's done a wonderful job of styling my hair, hasn't it? <laughs> Keep joining us for these episodes of Historical Markers. We are having an absolute blast making these.